We're at IAV 2019 and I'm speaking to Pat Canelli, Engineer and Director, Timony. Um, Pat, really simple question to start the interview. Um, what do Timony hope to gain from their attendance at IAV? Well, I suppose IAV is an unusual conference in that it brings together a lot of the end users and, and, and the customers. And you know, Timony have been involved in mobility systems for the best part of 50 years. And we have, we have developed a lot of vehicles. But even so, there's a lot of people out there who actually don't know the type of stuff that we actually provide. So we've been fortunate this year that we've been, uh, we, we were asked to, uh, to chair the mobility session, the, the mobility stream of the conference. And that gave us an opportunity to, to show some, showcase some of the things that we can do in terms of the help that we can provide to customers. And that's really the, the, the start of the process. Yeah. Um, and you say, if I if I may take you back the 50 years, um, Timony have been producing vehicles for 50 odd years. Um, could you perhaps give us a, a quick guided tour, as it were, of of some of the early stuff, some of the and right up to some of the more recent stuff, possibly even the future stuff? Okay. Well, in terms of the the historical stuff, I mean, we we did our first armoured personnel carrier in in the late uh, late 60s, early 70s for the Irish Army. And, and at the time, and, and it's funny, if you look back now and, and look at the photographs, they, they look like something that should be in a museum, which is actually where they are. But at the time, they were quite advanced in terms of what they provided. So they were double, double wishbone independent suspension. They were automatic transmissions. They had high hardness steel uh, for armor protection. They had bulletproof glass for vision blocks. So they, uh, you know, for, for a vehicle in the, in the late 60s, early 70s, they were actually quite advanced. Uh, and over the years, we've, we've, I suppose we've become synonymous with, uh, with independent suspension. And, and there's a lot of people who would associate us with that. But for that, you know, we, we have a background, a 50 year background in developing, designing and developing full vehicles. And certainly in the last 10, 15 years, we've started to migrate more into that type of thing. So we've tended to be involved in some vehicle integration projects uh, where we have not just provided the driveline system in terms of, you know, drop box, transfer case, axles and, and suspension systems, but we've, we've become involved in uh, the vehicle integration system. So we're providing power pack, uh, power pack integration, transmission, full driveline hydraulic system pneumatic systems and and I suppose from from our perspective that's something that you know a lot of people would would associate it we'll only go to Simony if, if we need uh, if we need hardware but actually we provide much more than hardware and and uh, so that's one of the things so in terms of more recent programs obviously we were heavily involved in the uh, in the US Marine Corps ACV 1.1 program and we were on our driveline systems were actually on two of the four vehicles uh, that were the four vehicles that were put forward for the program and we were fortunate enough to be to be on one of the ones on the SAIC SDK vehicle that was down selected for the EMD phase unfortunately they weren't uh, they weren't selected for uh, for the volume production but but I think it was still a very useful exercise in terms of what we learned about the systems and, and what we learned about the vehicle development. And, and, and looking towards the future, um, I mean, w where do you see uh, Timony's place in, in, in what's happening with mobility um, engineering in general? Okay, so looking at that, there's, there's probably two different ways to look at it. I mean, we can look at it just in terms of the technical, in terms of the mobility, but I think it's probably worth just stepping back a little bit and thinking about the, the, the customer perspective. So one of the things that, you know, when, when we look at where we, where, we, where we believe we add value for, for customers, we would have a number of customers who would come to us and they would, they may be from a country that doesn't have a lot of indigenous uh, military capability. And one of the things that we can do, because of the experience that we've, we've had over the last 15 or 20 years, is we can help get them up that experience curve and get them to a position where they're much more comfortable about developing that capability in country. And that can include the vehicle integration design stuff, but it can also include technology transfer uh, and local manufacture. And that's something that we have been actively doing for the last 20 years. So in terms of the market, in terms of mobility, what, we're, what we believe we're doing is we're opening up that opportunity to, uh, to customers and to countries who traditionally mightn't have th considered themselves as, uh, as, as being ideally placed to, to develop that capability. So that's on the, sort of on the customer side. If we then look at the technology side, I mean it's impossible to go to a motor show now, whether it's a, uh, a you know, commercial vehicle, you know, the IAA in Hanover, 
almost everything you looked at was, was electric. So it was electric, it was autonomous, and, and in terms of even in, in terms of the automotive industry, most of the R&D money at, at, at this stage, even in the commercial space, has been focused towards that, that type of uh, technology. And I think the military space, um, it will lag, but it will go there. And, and it's quite interesting when you look at some of the, discuss the discussions that are going on today around uh, autonomous vehicles. We were involved in a development program with DARPA and Carnegie Mellon University as far back as 2000. So 18 years, 19 years ago now, we were involved in developing a 6x6 electric autonomous vehicle. So we have a background of work there which can help accelerate customers' development into this type of technology. And there's no doubt there's challenges. There's definitely challenges around range and there's, there's a lot of stuff. But there's no doubt that also in the military space, there's opportunities, you know, simple things like silent watch and, you know, a, an electric vehicle uh, or a hybrid vehicle gives you an opportunity to provide a level of capability that the current vehicle may not be able to do. And on the subject of electric, hybrid, uh, autonomous drive, um, are, are there any current developments that you can share with us? Well, we're, we're currently in the final stages of negotiation with a customer to develop um, two 6x6 electric vehicles. Uh, at the moment, I can't, I can't share who the customer is, um, but they're across uh, two different weight ranges. Um, so it'll be quite an, an, interesting, an interesting project. Like I said, we're in the final stages of uh, contract negotiations, but we're hoping that we should be able to make an announcement in the near future. Excellent. Thank you very much.